Following the resignation of the SNP auditors, the party have now referred themselves to the Electoral Commission, admitting that apparently they can't find any new accounting firm to be their auditors. Wow, imagine how toxic you have to be that no accountant wants to touch you, how dirty you have to be, or maybe it's just an excuse. How can you not find a new accounting firm to become your new auditors? Anyway, we gave you the latest update earlier today on this channel about, uh, well, two new developments on uh, the SMP scandal. One was the fact that uh, Hamza Yusuf st is still trying to distract everybody. He's already said, I'm launching a new court case against uh, Westminster because they blocked my bill. They blocked Nicola Sturgeon's gender recognition bill. How dare you? Ooh, I want to cry. Well, if your bill and legislation is going to affect the whole of the country, the UK, then yeah, it has to be vetoed, Hamza. That's just how the constitution works. At the same time, we also had the update that uh, the police have uh, attended a new place, a new property uh, for their investigation during the police raids and everything else being going on in Dumbarton. And that is not really a good look for many people in the SMP establishment either. At the same time, right now, the latest that we have is the SMP contacted the Electoral Commission over difficulty finding a replacement auditors as the deadline for finance finances looms. What, what are they going to do if they can't really find anything? That's quite interesting because... Um, obviously, Johnson Car Carmichael um, did resign back in October, but the SMP didn't tell anybody until now, and they pretended that they only resigned two weeks ago. But one of the uh, SMP people have said, uh, told Sky News, that we have informed the Electoral Commission of the difficulty in identifying replacement auditors, and the National Treasurer has made the party's finance and audit committee aware. I'm glad that you eventually decided to spread the news because uh, before you just kept everything quiet internally inside the uh, the inner team. But it's great, all this, because not just it's entertaining, it's undermining the whole cause of separation, or as they call independence. At the same time, we have everybody getting involved, even celebrities. Oh, as usual. Yeah, we have Brian Cox, who's a great actor. I really like Brian Cox, especially in his uh, TV show, Succession. If you haven't seen it, definitely watch it. But the man is, oh God, he's so annoying when it comes to politics. He's, uh, he's very much against Brexit. He's very much against the English. He said, he told the SMP, he told the SMP as if he's some sort of guru or Yoda, saying, well, the SMP, you guys should change your name to the Scottish Independence Party, SIP. It's, well, SIP. <laughs> I'm not really sure if the name change is going to make people forget about the SMP scandal, by the way, Brian, because that's not how it works. It's like the that local Indian takeaway shop that you have, that every, every couple of years they just change the, the branding, saying, under new management, I can assure you, you're not going to get food poisoning anymore. <laughs> <laughs> the same thing happens all over again. It's, it's, it's the same management. You can't just change the name of the party and think, yeah, I think we can win the election now. The whole thing is it's so bad that even those individuals in Scotland who want separation from the UK, there are more of them than SNP supporters. Considering the SNP is the party for separation, you would think that everybody supporting the SNP should be, and or everybody who wants separation wants SNP. But nope. That's not how it works, because the Yes movement for Scottish independence is now leaving the SNP behind in the opinion polls. It is embarrassing. In 2014, when you had the referendum, it was basically the same thing. You had, as in like they were, they, they both, the both sides had the same numbers. If you believed in the Yes movement, uh, you had also believed in the SNP and Alex Salmond. But things have changed now. The whole system has been undermined, and it is beautiful to witness. So... We also had The Guardian. Oh, dear God, The Guardian got involved. The Guardian had written an article saying, uh, as the SNP loses its iron grip, a grip on Scotland, Labour must seize this golden opportunity. Yes, the party's ex extremely long uh, stretch in power at Holyrood is finally catching up with it. So, of course, you've got all these columnists for The Guardian saying, I think it's time to spread the new propaganda to keep pushing for the Scottish Labour Party because 
that's going to help everybody, right? Because the Scottish Labour Party are very competent. The Labour Party in general, very competent. You can see what they've been doing in Wales. Absolutely beautiful. Beautiful government, beautiful party. No issues with the NHS, no issues with the education system. They definitely did not ban children's books and toys during lockdown. No, no, they didn't do that. They definitely are not going ultra on net zero measures. No, everything's fine. So Scottish people, it's a lose-lose situation, unfortunately. You either have, you're either going to end up with the SNP in power again or the Scottish Labour Party because the Scottish Tories are nowhere to be seen because who, who, who wants them? They are completely all over the place unless they get the act together and it doesn't really help anyway considering there's a massive split between Scottish Tories and English Tories. They don't even know if they have unity or not. So I do feel sorry for people in Scotland who are not complete nutters who want separation and they simply want to have a good life. You're going to end up with some sort of terrible government regardless of who you vote for. Maybe the only solution is to abolish this devolution project of Tony Blair and hope for the best. <laughs> anyway, let me know your thoughts. I'm Maya Tusi and we are the media.